It's a great war between the heroes of Earth and the Demon Lord. As you can expect, the Demon Lord is much stronger than these heroes, but what you can't take away from these heroes is their persistence and their strength to win. As the Demon Lord hits them to the ground again, he also acknowledges that the warriors are strong and they are very courageous. One thing he tells them and insists on is that, even as enemies, he has to admit that their fighting skills are second to none. But they should know that no matter how strong they think they are, they can't be as strong as he is and he is never going to allow them to destroy his local minions. He tells them to give up on the fight because it is a futile fight and they will lose. The set of human warriors led by Max, the hero consisting of Fred, Leo and Yuria, lay on the floor injured. Fred is quick to give up. He asks himself if that will be the end of the fight they had thought they would win and quickly accepts his fate that there is no way they could win that fight. Max, their ever courageous leader, doesn't have the same belief. He calls Fred and tells him not to think like that. He asks Fred not to give up and says he is sure they will win that fight. He quickly jumps to the front of the demon lord, who looks at him and realizes the warriors are ready to lay their lives for that purpose. He admonishes them that since they have refused his advice to give up, then their death will be in his hand. He clenches his hand to fight them, and he wages his first attack against them. But Max calls for the divine protection which covers them. But the clinch of the demon lord breaks it. Using the distraction, Max calls Fred to attack the demon lord. Fred does so and after which he calls Leo to wage the next attack. Leo creates an opening for them to strike the demon lord, after which he summons Uria to give way with the holy light, and Max ends the entire fight by striking the demon lord and killing him. Even the demon lord can't believe what has happened to him. That is what happens when there is a determined team of enemies. He admits that he has lost, but he doesn't attribute his loss to anyone, including the other members of the team but to Max the hero. He calls Max the hero and tells him to celebrate that he has defeated him that time around. He tells him that no matter how he tries, he can't defeat his minions, and his minions will forever survive and exist. Before dying, the Demon Lord promises Max the hero one thing, which is the fact that he will indeed get reincarnated and when he returns to the world, he will have just one mission, which is to completely destroy Max the hero and kill him. He asks Max the hero to prepare for his return and he laughs as he dies. Without any doubt, the entire team of warriors are proud of themselves and what they have done. Ten years later, just as the demon lord has promised himself, he reincarnates, and that day, he thinks of the day of his death, and all he can remember is the last laugh he had as he gave up the ghost promising to come back. He gives that same ridiculous laugh saying that he is back and he is there with no other mission but to completely destroy Max the hero. His secretary, Xenia, comes to meet him. When he turns to look at Xenia, he sees that she is looking very tall, and indeed taller than he knows her to be. He asks her about his other loyal minions and about what they have been doing since he has been away, but she tells him that they haven't been doing anything and right from the time he has been away up till that day. His minions are in slumber and they are still in slumber. He calls them fools and insults them that they haven't been able to preserve his place when he is away. Now that he is back, he can preserve his place himself. He asks Xenia about the things they have been up to, but she advises him that before he focuses on any of that, he should first try to find clothes to put on. Since his reincarnation, he hasn't been bothered about how he looks. He didn't even check the mirror to check his recent body. All that is in his mind is his revenge. When Xenia brings his clothes and wears them on him, he doesn't like the cloth at all. He gets angry at her reminding her that he told her to prepare the same garment that he wore in his old life for him again. But she brings out a mirror and shows him his new appearance. She tells him that because his power has been sealed inside of him throughout the days he was in slumber and he didn't use them, the force of the power has held down his growth, and he is no longer the giant he knows himself to be instead. He looks like a little child and has a very big tummy. He realizes that he can no longer wear the clothes he wants to wear. She tells him that he doesn't have to worry and since she is his loyal secretary, she has predicted that such a thing will happen so she has prepared for several clothes that he could wear when he returns. She brings him an earthly cloth for him to wear, and when he wears it, he dislikes it immediately. He screams at her telling her that he didn't see such horrible clothes on the hero's friends. She brings him a maid's wear. And when he wears it and asks her who wears the clothes, she tells him it belongs to maids. He gets angry that she is bringing him clothes that belong to a maid, so she brings him school wear. He wears that, and he prefers it to his other options. She tells him that since they have dealt with the issue of his clothes, the next thing he has to deal with is all the work he has to do. She tells him his duties have piled up since the day he died, and now they are as tall as the sky, so he has to get to them as fast as possible. As she attempts to drag him away, 
He calls her back, reminding her that the major mission he has is Max the Hero. He asks her about Max the Hero, but she tells him that he doesn't have to worry himself about Max. He imagines that since Max is the hero who has defeated the Demon Lord and saved the world, he would have a very big position on Earth and may have increased his power. He insists that Xenia should tell him about Max despite the fact that she doesn't want to say anything. She checks her book and tells him that she doesn't have any information about Max. She tells him that he doesn't have to worry about Max because in a few years, Max will die, and everyone will forget him. The Demon Lord feels they are hiding something from him. He asks Xenia to bend and begs her to tell him what she is hiding. She insists that she isn't hiding anything. He imagines that something could have happened to Max, and if that is the case, it means his entire revenge game is at stake. He jumps at Xenia, asking her if Max has died and if Max died through assassination. She tells him no. He feels it's wasteful that he is begging her to talk when he could use his third eye to find Max. He activates his third eye, and he sees that Max is still alive. He also sees that Max is living in a room beside the Empire, so he decides that it is time for him to visit Max. He tells Xenia that he needs to show Max that he is back so he can see Max tremble before him. But Xenia holds his legs. She begs him not to go telling him that he will be disappointed when he gets there. But the Demon Lord insists that he needs to do what needs to be done. He activates his wing, and he starts flying. Xenia stays in regret hoping that he wouldn't be too disappointed when he sees the new hero. As the Demon Lord flies around the Earth, he says that they aren't even any better than he knows them to be, and their building and environments haven't improved. He eventually gets to where he has sighted Max, and when he enters the room, even before he sees the person he is talking to, he brags that he is back just as he has promised and he will ensure he kills Max as bitterly as Max has killed him. When he relaxes and checks his environment, he sees the old-looking man sitting on the bed. The person looks dirty and very old, and it is no other person than the hero the Demon Lord is looking for. The Demon Lord stands there disappointed. Max looks at him and asks him who he is, and the Demon Lord can't also imagine that it is the Max he knows, so he says that it seems he has entered into the wrong apartment and that he is sorry for barging in. Max tells him that he heard him talking about Max and he is Max, but the Demon Lord can't believe him. He tells him that he is sure Max isn't the Max he is looking for. Suddenly, he sees Max's sword around, and he recognizes that sword. There is no way he won't know the sword because that is the same sword that sliced his arm about 10 years ago and led to his death. This makes him believe that Max is still the same Max that killed him. He asks Max to be sure and Max explains that he is still the same person. The Demon Lord can't believe that. He wonders what could have gone wrong and in his pitiable manner, he sees that Max's house is dirty and it has several tissues on the floor, so he starts helping Max pick them up. Max asks him why he is doing all that, and he claims it is because he can't believe it's this same Max that made him wake early from his slumber. He asks Max what he could have done wrong, and Max says that a peaceful human world does not need a hero, and he was disposed of after his duty, and he started living in isolation. The Demon Lord can't believe that. He sees a computer in Max's room and browses about Max the hero, and he sees several scandals that Max was involved in, including how he had with a married woman. Max insists that he didn't know the woman was married, and if he knew, he wouldn't have done it. He claimed he was set up. The Demon Lord also sees a news where Max hit some boys when he was drunk and his scandal with about ten women. He tells Max that he was treated that way because of what he did, and he also watches a video of when Max was still celebrated and how proud Max was during that time. He insists that he has returned for his revenge and he will ensure he destroys the world, but Max says he doesn't care about the world again. The Demon Lord asks him about his old friends, but Max says he doesn't have any friendship with them again. The Demon Lord keeps trying to convince Max to get back to his usual state and threatens to kill Max's former colleagues. But Max tells him that he owes Leo money, so it's better they die. The Demon Lord gets angry and sets out to attack Max, but Max throws him off, and he collapses. When he wakes, he finds himself inside Max's cupboard. He comes out, and Max treats him to coffee. He tells him that he doesn't care about what he does, and if he starts his trouble again, another hero will come up so the Demon Lord can do all he wants. The Demon Lord insists that Max still has his strength of those days, especially with how he threw him away. But Max claims he is no longer the hero. The Demon Lord realizes that is the reason Xenia didn't want him to visit. The Demon Lord leaves, and Max continues with his daily life, but the Demon Lord returns in the evening. He tells Max that he decided that the world has changed and he needs to learn about it before he takes over it, so he wants to stay with Max and learn about the human world well. 
When Max says he can't babysit a baby, the demon lord reminds him that it's him who will be babysitting and taking care of Max till he returns to his normal state. He starts cooking, and that evening, Max eats the delicious food prepared by the demon lord as they start their new cohabitation. In the morning, Naomi tries to wake up the hero, Max, but he keeps sleeping like a dog. She thinks that he is only acting, so she tries enticing him by telling him that breakfast is ready for him. But Max doesn't respond, so Naomi wonders if he is even alive and checks if he is breathing. She tries to shake Max, which causes him to act as if he is having a nightmare and she finally feels relieved to know that Max is indeed alive. After eating breakfast, Naomi washes the dishes when Max decides to head outside. Naomi wants to tag along, but Max doesn't want that, as the only reason he is going outside is to get away from her. Naomi wonders why that is and asks Max if he feels embarrassed to be seen with her. Max thinks that she is talking just like his mother, so he tells her to stop acting like an old lady and explains that he actually doesn't want her to go outside as people will freak out seeing a demon. So he tells her that if she wants to leave this apartment, she has to do something about her third eye and her red horns first. Because Naomi doesn't know any concealment magic, she lets Max go alone and wonders what he does all day outside. She assumes that he must be undergoing some sort of secret training in preparation for their rematch and decides to confirm her suspicions. She realizes that she doesn't actually need to conceal her horns, as she could just shapeshift into someone else since shapeshifting is a demon lord's area of expertise. But she doesn't know what form she should take and takes inspiration from Xenia, who showed her a schoolgirl's outfit, and decides to disguise herself as a student. So, she uses her metamorphose magic to shapeshift and disguise herself as a fully grown woman who clearly doesn't fit into her clothes. However, Naomi thinks that her disguise is perfect and decides to go out. Right then, her demon horns start popping out, and she assumes that this is happening because her magic is dissipating. So she realizes that she cannot lose focus and remains vigilant. Shortly after, Naomi walks around the human realm, as she calls it for the first time in the last 10 years and becomes the center of attraction because of her clothing. But she doesn't realize that, as the writers themselves don't intend to, and instead admires how humans have built tall buildings and skyscrapers. A candy van stops in front of her, so she takes a taste of that and tries out more human food like kebabs and sandwiches. After filling her stomach, Naomi comes across a video shop but skips it as she doesn't find any interest and keeps looking for Max. After searching everywhere else in town, this is the only area left, so Naomi assumes Max is probably around here somewhere and successfully locates him. So, she activates stalking mode and eagerly awaits to see what kinds of secrets Mass is hiding. She follows Max to a convenience store but doesn't go with him inside. He quickly goes in, comes out after buying a beer, and again begins walking aimlessly. So, Naomi realizes that he isn't actually doing any secret training but instead is slacking off. Max then goes to a park and begins eating snacks, so Naomi wonders why he is so pathetic. Some kids come to the park to play and recognize Max as the hero, which makes Naomi happy as she realizes that there are still people out there who idolize Max. However, the three kids aren't here for an autograph and instead challenge Max to play soccer against them. The girl among the kids sees Max holding beer, so she calls him a pathetic loser for slacking off and roaming aimlessly. The three kids look down on Max and claim that they can beat him in a soccer match. But Max is actually good at soccer and doesn't even let any kids take the ball from him. He doesn't understand the first thing about playing with kids, which is to go easy all the time and annoy the kids. So, one of them kicks Max in anger, so he pulls up the kid and punishes him by making him feel like he is flying. After playing with the three kids for a while, Max moves on to train them how to fight with a sword. He proudly tells them the story of 10 years ago, when he fought off a whole swarm of demons single-handedly. He shows the kids how he slashed, sliced, and stabbed the demons and takes pride in it. Naomi, who is still stalking him, sees how even with a bunch of literal children around, Max is perfectly fitting in with them as if he were also a child. One of the kids' moms comes to the park and scolds him for playing with an old man. As she takes him away, the other male kid also decides to head back home and reveals to Max that his mom has disallowed him from playing with him too. Max doesn't feel bad. Instead, he tells the kid to always listen to his mom. The little girl tries to make Max feel better by telling him that her parents don't care one way or the other. But still, she decides to leave as her friends are gone, and she promises Max that she will be back again to play with him. Now that Max is left alone, he finishes his beer and falls asleep on the bench. Naomi wonders why Max didn't just go back to the apartment if his only aim was to sleep all day. 
she thinks that there's no point in trying to stalk him anymore and decides to head back home to get dinner ready. But as she begins to leave, she sees three thugs approaching Max to bully him. They try to wake up Max, telling him that he can't just sleep in a public place and hold him by his collar to forcefully pick up a fight. Max warns the thug not to push it and asks them if they don't know who he is. The thug bets that Max is just some homeless, lazy bum and begins to insult him. One of the thugs even punches Max in the face to make him fight back. Naomi realizes that if Max does fight back, he will end up on the headlines of the national news and will be despised by the people for violently attacking a civilian. So, she hopes that Max will not pick a fight. He indeed doesn't, and he tells the three huggers that they aren't even worth his time. It seems only sleeping is worth his precious time, and he tells the three thugs to head back home. But they are not going without a fight and start to beat up Max, saying that they are only doing this as a favor to society, and claiming that society would be better without a loser like him. Max, of course, doesn't fight back and takes the beating silently. But Naomi can't take this anymore and uses her hypnosis magic on the three thugs to make them fall unconscious. Because of her magic, Naomi returns to her true form and tells Max not to worry anymore as she is here for him now. But instead of thanking her, Max gets annoyed at her for not helping him sooner. Anyway, they went back home together, and Max calls himself pathetic for what he does every day. Naomi cheers him up and offers to make him dinner. But Max takes off again, as he claims to have some other business to attend to. Naomi comes back home and decides to make Max his favorite hamburger steak. Meanwhile, Max goes to the video shop and ends his day by watching what he calls business stuff. The next day, Naomi disguises herself as the hot girl once again and buys some groceries. Max sees her from a distance and immediately falls for her looks, not knowing she is Naomi. After Naomi comes back home in her usual form, Max tells her about the hot girl, and Naomi thinks that he is speaking of someone else. She proceeds to make the meal, and Max starts eating. Their apartment's bell rings, so Naomi goes to find out who it is and sees that it's Xenia. Xenia gets in tears after finally finding Her Majesty, and upon seeing Her Majesty living and breathing, she finally feels relieved. Naomi asks her what her business is here, as she strictly told her to wait at the castle. But Xenia explains that Naomi only went out claiming to be back in no time, and yet she was gone for days. It seems Xenia is rather exhausted, so Max offers her some food, and she starts gulping up all of their dinner. After eating Max and Naomi's shares as well, Xenia compliments the chef for having great skills as a chef. Max gets irritated as he can no longer enjoy dinner, and Naomi tells him not to worry, offering to cook him something else later. Something gets stuck in Xenia's teeth, so she asks for a toothpick, which makes Max wonder if she is even a woman. Naomi explains to Max that Xenia is her secretary, even though she doesn't look qualified for that. However, Xenia takes pride in being Naomi's servant and reveals that she trudged across the land for three days and three nights looking for her. So, she basically walked here, even though there are buses and trains everywhere, which explains why she was so exhausted. Xenia reveals that she didn't even hide her demon form, and in these three days, many humans have seen her. But she thinks it's not important, and what's most important to her is to take Naomi back to the castle. Xenia tells her not to associate herself with this washed-up hero, as she will just waste her time and her brain cells. Although what she is saying is disrespectful, it is quite true. Still, Naomi doesn't want to go back and would rather stay with her husband. Xenia wonders if the lazy virus from Max has spread to Naomi already. Max can't take the insults anymore and encourages Xenia to take Naomi back right away. Naomi gets offended as she claims to be the only reason why he is still functioning and thinks that he would just die on the road if she left him alone here. Max doesn't want to argue with his waifu, so he takes his offer back and lets Naomi stay. But Xenia remains determined and even returns to fight with Max to take back her majesty. Max notices that Xenia is wearing knuckles, and Naomi explains that she is only fighting barehandedly because she cannot use magic which also explains why she walked all the way here. Naomi tells Xenia that she doesn't stand a chance against the hero, but she doesn't listen and goes to punch him. So, Max shows Xenia a glimpse of his powers and immediately wins the duel. Xenia, upon realizing that the hero isn't completely useless, apologizes to him sincerely. Xenia realizes why Naomi speaks so highly of Max's strength and thinks that it is admirable. Naomi sees Xenia sweating quite a bit, so she tells her to go take a bath. Max wonders when Naomi became the co-owner of this place, and notices that she is getting too much into being the waifu. Later, while Xenia is taking a shower, Naomi apologizes to Max on behalf of Xenia. Max doesn't mind, as he has already forgiven her. 
After taking the shower, Xenia comes out of the shower and almost demonizes our entire YouTube channel. Naomi decides to go shopping, leaving Max alone with Xenia. Xenia drinks beer and acts rudely towards Max again, telling him not to do anything wrong with Naomi. Because she drank beer, Xenia lost her sanity and attacked Max, so he ran out of the apartment to get away from her. Their chase continues until Max decides to finally fight back. At that moment, the police arrive and arrest Xenia, as they have gotten complaints from many civilians that she has been running around town without wearing any clothes. Xenia finally comes back to her senses as she realizes that she is wearing nothing and gets into tears. Max apologizes to the police on her behalf, and they let her off as they recognize Max as the hero. Later, Naomi also apologizes to Max on behalf of Xenia. Xenia comes there, revealing that she will be their neighbor from now on to keep her majesty safe from Max, whom she still considers to be a vile man. In another distant city, in a flashback to Max and his friend's humble beginning, two demon warriors, Max and his friend, journey around, and they pass through an empty forest. They look at the cloud, and they assume that it seems it will rain soon. As a result, they assume the cloud is like that because of the rain. As they keep walking, they notice something coming nearer to them. As can be expected of warriors, they immediately turn so they can defeat whatever is coming at them, and it turns out it is demons. They try to fight the demon but realize that the demon can't even get nearer to them. It is at that point that they realize that what is covering the sky isn't clouds from rain, instead, it is a barrier. It is not a minor one but a very strong barrier that is used to secure the city. They continue their journey, and they go to the temple. At the temple, they witness a cleric speaking to some gullible members of the city that although they had been able to stop demons from attacking them for a long while, they have not been able to do well at it. He tells them they must do better to stop the demons from attacking them, and he thinks it is best if they all make personal efforts to protect themselves. He tells them that he is selling a talisman that will protect them all from any demon that sets out to attack them. He says he will sell the talisman to them at a very low price, and they all struggle to get it. The warriors enter into the temple, and they wonder if the cleric is sincere or if it is just another scam. The cleric goes to meet them, and he asks them who they are and if they are also there because they want to buy the talisman. He asks them if they want to buy, and they insist it is just another scam. The cleric refuses to accept what they mean and tells them that if they aren't ready to buy what he is selling, then they should leave him alone so he can sell to the other people who want to buy. Suddenly, some demons jump into their building. The demons break the barrier because they are there in large numbers, and they begin to attack everyone there. The demons fight the people, and the warriors and the clerics start fighting back. At one point, one of the demons attempts to attack one of the members, and the member brings out his talisman to attack the demon. When he does so, the talisman shows signs of being effective which makes him assume the talisman is effective. But when he opens his eyes, he sees that the demon is still right in front of him. He shows forth the talisman again and closes his eyes because he is scared. Luckily, one of the warriors comes to save him, and one of them also saves the cleric from the demon. They all reunite to fight again. The cleric tells them that he knows they are not just normal passersby, and they also tell him that they know he is not a normal cleric. On the other hand, Xenia, Max and the demon lord keep living together in peace. Xenia tells Max that he wants to ask him about something and Max also sees that the demon lord is holding a document. He attempts to take it and read it, but the demon lord stops him. He, unfortunately, gets a hold of it, and when he opens it, he sees that it is a documentary that contains the effect leading to Leo the warrior's deflection. He stands up immediately and leaves to take a walk to cool his head. After he leaves, the demon lord tells Xenia that he didn't intend that Max will see the document and that he knows that Max is quite emotional and knows Max doesn't like sharing whatever is hurting him with others when he is going through pain and also says he is sure Max doesn't want to have a conversation about his old friend deflection. In a bid to clear his head from all he is going through at the moment, Max walks around the city, but unfortunately for him, he falls into the hands of some journalists who had been waiting in ambush for him so they can interrogate him about the video they saw of Xenia chasing him out of the house naked. They show him the recording, and he is shocked that someone can be jobless enough to record such a thing even when it is harmless. He hopes that the journalists won't be able to recognize that Xenia is a demon. They ask him what he knows about the lady that is chasing him, and he tells them he knows nothing and that the young lady is just a friend who was drunk and decided to start a drama. They ask him if he had intercourse with the lady and what he had done to her for her to chase him like that, and he explains that he has done nothing to her, and it is because she is drunk. He tells them the lady is his friend, and he doesn't think they want that kind of attention. They ask him if the lady is a minor, and he screams at them. 
he says he is sure the lady is not a minor, and he made sure he did his research well before he became friends with her so they don't have to worry. The journalist refuses to stop. They ask him again what the girl does, and he tells them that he thinks the girl works at an office. He says she is just visiting, and it is nothing serious, so if they don't mind, they should allow him to leave because he has something more important to do. It doesn't seem like they are ready to do so, but before they bombard him with the remaining questions that they have for him, they ask him if he has anything to say about Leo's defection. He turns to look at the journalist, and he leaves her. He runs away from there and takes the next corner. The journalists decide that they are going to stalk him so they can find out his house, and they can see if the lady is still in his house, and they can take a video coverage of when she is coming out of the house. He rightly assumes that they will stalk him, so he immediately enters through the next corner. He steps into the mud with one of his legs, and he uses it to create a sign that he has passed through another route, and he uses it to distract them. They eventually follow him as planned but can't see him. They are angry that he was able to deceive them and that he could escape from their grasp. He comes out of hiding, looking at his dirty legs, and he is angry at the journalists. He is more angry that he can't even leave his house to take a walk again because everywhere he goes, there is always someone or something waiting for him. On the other hand, he is also glad that the people didn't recognize that the lady that came out of his house is a demon, and he also wonders who took that video. He eventually goes home. Little does he know that Fred, his former colleague, has been stalking him. Fred eventually sees where Max lives and says he is disappointed that a hero would be living such a bad life, and says it's due to Max's actions. Immediately after Max enters the house, the demon lord is angry because he is coming inside the house dirty. The demon lord says his cloth is muddy and asks him where he is coming from. He says he doesn't like the way he looks, and he goes to bring another pair of pants for Max. He attempts to pull Max's pants for him so he can wear other pants on him. But Max is embarrassed because of how the Demon Lord is doing and says that he wants the Demon Lord to turn away from him so he can change his pants himself. The Demon Lord wonders why he is feeling embarrassed that day when he is the same person that walks around the house with just his underwear since the day they have been staying together. The Demon Lord insists on helping him, saying he could use the opportunity to wash the dirty pants immediately. They keep arguing about this while Fred and his new subordinates walk towards there, and they knock on the door. As they hear the knock on the door, the demon lord immediately figures that the person behind it is powerful. He tells Max to change his dress so they can attend to the door, but Max tells him that the fact that the person behind the wall is someone who is powerful is another reason why the demon lord should hide so he doesn't put him in another trouble. Reluctantly, the demon lord decides to hide. He enters into a cupboard and hides there. Max goes to attend to the door, and he sees that it is Fred. He asks Fred what he is looking for in his house, but Fred says there is nothing wrong with old friends visiting each other, which is not a big deal. He says he just wants to talk with Max, and Max should allow him inside the house. Max is reluctant at first, but Fred insists, and claims he doesn't want his other colleagues to enter and his colleague can just go take a rest because it is a meeting between old friends which is him and Max. He enters the house and looks around. He says that Max's house is looking much better than he expected it to look like, and the house is tidy. He also says that Max is living well. He sees Max's old sword and asks him why he isn't using the sword. Max says there is nothing he wants to use it for. He also says that the sword is bigger than his cupboard so there is nowhere for him to put the sword. He asks Fred what he has visited for. He claims he knows Fred didn't come to survey the house, but Fred says they can talk later. Fred reminds him about his magic circle and its use of it and later sits down to have the conversation he had come to have. He says he has come to talk about the Gamma Republic. The Demon Lord recalls that the Gamma Republic is a country that was created by the people who had deflected, and they are headed by Leo. Fred tells Max that no matter how much Leo disguises himself, they aren't a republic. Instead, they are a team of traitors who have taken over the city's land. He says that recently, Leo's audacity has become so loud, and he will do anything to take the city, which means that a war is imminent. He asks Max if Max knows what that means, but Max doesn't care. He removes his cap and he begs Max. He says he wants Max to fight with him again, but Max looks at him and says no. Max says he isn't interested in carrying the sword again, but Fred tries to beg him. He says that if Max accepts to return, he could convince the government to give him a governmental position so he will earn money and live nobly like the hero that he is, but Max refuses again. Max says there is no way he could convince him and he should leave, as he is about to do so. He says he knows Max has been enjoying and he saw a video of a naked lady chasing Max. He says Max could convince the others about who the lady is, but he knows the lady is a demon. 
He claims he hasn't told anyone about it and that he can keep it a secret if Max joins the force, but Max says no. Fred asks to search Max's cupboard where the demon lord is hiding. Max refuses at first, so he insists, so he allows him, but the demon lord changes to a ghost and chases Fred away. Fred gets scared, he can't even walk home, and his subordinates have to carry him home. On his way, he says that he will ensure that Max later joins him, and he will do it not because of himself but because of Max too. The demon lord comes out of hiding, and Max asks if he scared Fred, but the demon lord says he didn't do anything, but he is glad they aren't caught. In the flashback to the war, the two warriors and the cleric destroys the monster, and the cleric confesses that he is a fake cleric. The warriors tell him that he tried to protect the people with his barrier, and he really did his best. They ask him to follow them. The cleric introduces himself as Fred, and one of the warriors, Max, welcomes him. 